James, 33 chains, 33. Ocean now, yeah. cruising big scan, hit for top. What is the deal, beautiful people? Welcome to Lifestyles of Fine. My name is Ramon. So before we get started, <clears throat> excuse me, let me just say this video will be uh, published to both our main channel and our sneaker channel. So every now and then we like to do these these videos that we publish on both channels just to remind you guys that yes we we have a dedicated sneaker channel and uh, this one isn't too bad I, I think there's a a lot of discussion behind this one i think you guys will actually enjoy if you're not a sneaker head uh, because it's something that uh, we can seemingly relate to in all aspects of, uh, of our hobbies <clears throat> so uh these guys reached out to me uh let me let me get the name right it's heaven hype heaven Dot RU, and they said, "Listen, we want to send you some sneakers to review." I'm well, like, "Like what? What? What are you sending me?" So I saw what it was, and I go, "Wait, dude!" Immediately, I responded. I said, "Are these real?" And uh, the guy wrote back and said, "These are unauthorized authentics." So of course, I'm not the sneakerhead. You guys know Tawan is the sneakerhead. Uh, so I sort of sat back for a second and say, what, what does that even mean? So I, I started to do some digging. I started to do some research. And the more I looked into it, the more interested the conversation about unauthorized authentic became. Uh, even the name itself, unauthorized, and then you, you put authentic behind it. Sort of like, wait, what? So let's let's go back in time. Uh, there was a time when, uh, oh, it still is a time. I shouldn't say it was. So the the fake or the replicas that you could get of sneakers once upon a time were uh, blatantly bad. You can tell. Uh, it was always something about the texture, the feel. Sometimes you didn't even have to go that far. You could just look at it, and the structure of the shoe would be off. Um, the, you know, like the, the, the lace holes, uh, the, the Nike signs, things weren't in the right place. Things just, it, it wasn't right. And you can tell. And then somewhere along the line, I want to say five, six years ago, they started getting really, really good. And I remember back then reading some articles about how, uh, companies, the factories that Nike was using to make these shoes would be sending the blueprints off to other factories so that they would produce and they would source the materials. So it became less of a guessing game, uh, meaning they knew exactly, the, they had the exact blueprint, they knew exactly how to make the shoe. It was just up to them to find the right material. And this is where you got into that world where some of the replicas or the fakes were really, really good and then some were just terrible. So it, it started to blur that line a little bit, but then came what is now known as unauthorized authentics. So from my research, and I, I've been scouring the internet, uh, the, the Reddit, the sneaker forums, uh, the even even the YouTubes, generally speaking, here's what an, an unauthorized authentic is, such a tough word to say uh adidas nike whomever goes to a factory and says listen i'm paying you to make a hundred thousand of these shoes and the factory says yeah okay cool right and then the factory it finishes that order and then off to the side uh, i don't know what the case is I, I still haven't been able to find this out maybe they order more material than needed or they had material left over but they, they make, instead of 100,000, 100, they make 110,000. And they keep the 10,000 for themselves. And then they offload it to the to the black market uh, or, or whomever, fall up the truck or whatever the case is. And I thought that was interesting because the only difference between the real shoe or the retail shoe, I should say, that is going to be sold and retailers, Foot Locker, Adidas, Adidas on website, Nike's on website, Jordan, wherever, is the fact that they were part of the original order that shipped. These other 10,000 shoes were just 
not authorized to be made. And this is such an interesting conversation. So this now comes into your your belief system or how you define real versus fake. Now let's let's throw an analogy in there before we get too deep into the real versus fake. In the uh, luxury world, let's take Louis Vuitton for instance. Louis Vuitton, uh, there's some staggering figure out there that like 76% of Louis Vuitton that you see out in the world is actually fake. Uh, it's not fake. It's not a replica. Uh, it's it's not that it's unauthorized. It's no, it's fake. That shit is not real. Why is that? So as it turns out, Louis Vuitton actually owns their own factories. And, you know, they've got generations of people uh, who've been working for them, who makes this, uh, who makes their materials and cut their cloth and structure their bags and yada, yada, yada. It only comes from one place. You know, they don't go out and license this factory, that factory. So there's no real chance of things leaking from there. Like they control that very tightly. What this means is the replicas that you see out there are very easy to spot because of this, because they are replicas, right? The stitching's always off. Uh, the color is slightly different. The structure of the bag's never the same. Like, you can tell. Here, going back to this factory that made the uh, 10,000 extra shoes, it's not that simple. In fact, you can't tell it's the same exact shoe made from the same exact material, made in the same exact place, made by the same exact process. Now, where it gets uh, where it gets even more interesting is uh, the tags that are in the shoe are are not uh, not real. So I guess what happens and, and this part was very it was very murky for me to find the details, but the just the gist of it is, if Adidas pays for 100,000 shoes, they send 100,000 boxes. They send 100,000 tags, 100,000, uh, let me, where is this? Hang on a second. 100,000 of these tags that you got hanging off and shoelaces and whatnot. And you, the factory puts them in there and send them back and then it's good to go, right? The, the thing here is for the extra 10,000 that they have, they don't have tags inside the shoe. They don't have uh, the, the little lace bag hanging off. So they then go to China and get these things that look exactly the same. And they put them on the, unauthor the unauthorized authentic and they roll it out. So yes, here we have this interesting mix of something that is indeed authentic, but then the tag is from China, right? And I want you guys to stop and think, is this, is this fake? <laughs> you know what I mean? Is it fake? Um, I still personally, I have not arrived to an answer. Uh, as all things we discuss on these channels, uh, things are, or life itself is very complex. And there's, there's a lot going on around here. And what I want to, what I want to bring to light is why, why would someone do something like this? Uh, not obviously, uh, create the unauthorized shoe but I mean why would as a sneaker fan or whomever you would go out and buy something like this so I, I look at I you know I hear Kanye sit down and say you know he wants everyone to own a pair of his shoes and I see the shoes come out and then immediately you know they come out limited supply you can't get a hold of them and then boom there they are twelve hundred dollars we went from a retailer of 220 to twelve hundred dollars and when you start to really analyze what's happening in between there you get to you get to see it's these uh it's these kids out here with the bots right the minute the, the shoes released on the website they bombed the website and they got four or five sometimes i've seen people about up to 15 20 pairs of the shoe meanwhile people can't get one pair uh you've got the the system where the lottery system which seems to be cool and you know it's a nice little game we all like to play it on the adidas confirmed app and there's that and then there's when it actually gets released into the Foot Locker, Foot Action, whatever. You got the sneaker resellers out there who've already got their connections and they got their pairs locked up. So the problem here is there's very little chance that you will be able to get these shoes for retail. And that sucks. I mean, you know, it sucks with someone like me because I'll pay 220 for some Yeezys. 
um, it's going to be a lot harder to pay 500 for them. Although I will, depending on the pair I want. 1200 nah you wildin you, you definitely wild that, that's an exhaust from a car <laughs> that's uh that's some suspension from a car that's some new lenses from a camera like no nah, i'm not i'm not with it like that that's not my main thing but some people will and i'm not mad at it and some people's got the money that they can just throw away on a whim but my main issue here is i hate to see the kids getting left out and i hate to see the, the sneaker heads getting left out. And I, I mean I mean this from a sincere place where you have, um, you know, these kids, they work their summer jobs and they do what they do to save up their allowance, whatever it is, and they can barely get to that. But they get to that 220, 230, 250 with tax. They get there and they can't get the shoe. That sucks. That is a tough lesson in life to learn. Even if you have the money, you still can't get it. And then there's these, these devout... Uh, sneaker fans, uh, sneaker heads, and they like to collect. And right out of the gate, the shoe was just unreachable, untouchable. Uh, I think that sucks. I, I think it's, I think it's not fair. Um, you know, and and coming off of that, the middle, the middle ground on the other side of the fence is, I have a, I have a respect for the sneaker reseller. Um, and I mean, you know, I mean the reseller who is standing online to get this pair and then he got it and then he, he gets on his bike and then he rides another mile to the next door to get it because him he's got orders people text him like yeah i need that in a 10 and a half and he's gonna make it happen and he's making a little bit of a margin he's the one out there in the streets on the line doing it like i respect that dude it gets so much harder to respect the dude who just pays whatever it is for a bot and just breaks the internet and gets it and then, and then just raises the price and no one can afford it like that really sucks so when someone says to me you know uh and you guys will check out the site heightheaven.ru they go on there and they see the prices of these shoes uh, they're coming in under retail all right and this is so this is a uh, the pharrell human race this is the black one this shoe right now the authorized version goes for about a grand right um, and I remember when they came out because I actually tried to get them and they were super limited. Instantly, they went up to a grand. I mean, I think the black ones may have been like 800, but they crept up over time. And I just said to myself, no way, no way. But you go to this site and you see on this site, this shoe is going to cost you $180. You say, wait a minute, <laughs> wait a minute. So it's obviously fake, right? And then you say, wait, no, hold on. This is the same exact material. This is the same exact shoe, the same exact feel. Like this boost, this boost is the real boost. This isn't some foamy type material that looks like boost and it, it doesn't feel like boost when you walk like it is boost. It's hard to tell someone you shouldn't spend your money there. I can't make that argument. In, all, in no type of logical sense. And I, I get it. There are people who is going to be like, yo, you wildin'. This shit is just fake. It's unauthorized. But it... listen, I've seen, and, and this is this is real talk, right? I've seen Tawan open sneaker boxes with wild amounts of flaws on the shoes. Straight from the factory. Straight from Nike. He got it straight from the Nike app or sneakers app, whatever it is. And I'm just like, you you might have gotten a cleaner shoe if you'd have bought the fake version right so i don't even want to hear this it's oh yo it's, it's fake or right off the back it, it's more complex than that then you got dudes i i've met and spoken to people who are avid sneaker collectors and they go out and they buy unauthorized authentics because they they put the authorized one back in a collection and the unauthorized authentic one they wear on a day-to-day -day basis. I can't argue with that. I really can't argue with that. And to to go back to the, the Louis Vuitton analogy, you know, it's, I think a lot of people don't understand or they never take the time to understand people's uh, obsession with quality. Quality is something that uh, you're, you're pretty much paying for someone's time, right? The more quality something is, the more time it took to make it. 
the more time it took to extract those certain amounts of materials in a particular way to put this product together. That's quality. In the Louis Vuitton analogy, I personally would never buy a fake Louis Vuitton because I know it's not the same quality, right? Here, I can't think that way because this literally is the same quality. And, and I feel like that's that's something so interesting. And, and I want I want you guys to chime in. I want you to get in the comments down below and, and tell me what it is. Uh, you know, would you just write these off as just fake? Or would you just would you would you sympathize with the with the kid who's unable to get his hands on this? Would you sympathize with the sneakerhead with three kids and he just he just loves this shoe and he has to get it? Let me know. And you know what? Go over, head over to the site, hypeheaven.ru. Check these guys out. Uh, you might you might be shocked to see what they got up there, man. And the prices. I, I this is this is definitely something interesting. And I know you guys are gonna take this for a drive. So uh, I'm looking forward to your comments. Listen, my name is Ramon. Thank you for checking it out. Don't forget in the description you'll see all of the links to our other channels we got the photography we got the sneakers uh the main channels the technology where you'll see this as well and of course uh we got the accessories for men uh like the video if you like it i'm out peace if i had to describe lifestyles to find i would say it is a dream come true uh, to have a platform where we can talk about the things that we love and we can share with people who also love the things we love the way we love and just have conversations that matter and go back and forth and grow as a community it's it's been a pleasure it's been a dream and i just want to thank everyone that's involved for rocking out with us